I guess I was uh, going to give a different view of the financial uh, of the topic of the of the panel, but there will be something in common, which is my skepticism well, <laughs> about what's being done. So let me take a different view, perhaps, from the rest of the of the panelists. Uh, one, um, there's one uh, thing that's been behind most of the problems we have now in Europe and in, in the US, which is the huge uh, housing and stock and derivatives price bubbles that we have seen. Okay, we have seen as, uh, asset prices going up to levels that were completely unjustified by their fundamentals. And this is behind everything. Uh, the fiscal crisis in Spain, uh, Spain had surpluses in the mid 2000s, but and now it has a big, big deficit. But if you look at the items that are in the revenues that were lost, it's mostly <clears throat> tax income that was lost from the real estate uh, transaction tax and from corporate tax. So it was, it was uh, income that was there before because of the bubble, and now it's gone. Uh, if you look at the uh, sovereign debt crisis, well, uh, same thing, it's because of fiscal crisis. If you look at the banking crisis, obviously it's, uh, it's been due to the crash in uh, housing prices that we have experienced. Uh, if you look at unemployment, it's probably due to the fact that there was uh, a lot of people working. There was probably twice the amount of uh, people employed in the construction sector in the five or six years ago here. And uh, it's been, a lot of people came from other countries to, to work in that sector, and now there is no work. So a lot of problems come from, from that, from uh, houses. In, in Spain, it was houses that were overvalued. And uh, perhaps it's a good time to talk about uh, assets being overvalued after the Nobel Prize given to Schiller and Fama and maybe Hansen also. No? So, uh, one, okay, so the, 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 the proposals that are in the, on the table about regulating banks, you could think of them as a way of dealing with these powers because what was the problem? The problem was there were some savings originating in some household, let's say in Hamburg, and this family put uh, their savings in a branch of uh, Commerzbank in Frankfurt. Then Commerzbank gave a CDO to uh, some, not, maybe La Caixa, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> not a CDO. Huh? Not a CDO, well, uh, Cedula Hypotecaria, pretty ah, similar. Uh, okay. Um, and, um, and then, in the end, the savings bank, whoever it was, was uh, giving it to someone uh, financing 110% of their house in, a, in an overvalued, uh, in, a, in an overvalued flat uh, somewhere, let's say, in Tarrasa, where I'm from. No? So, um, so there's been there four actors kind of making a mistake, right? Uh, right? There's two banks, two persons. And uh, the financial regulation idea is, well, let's break the, the mistake in the middle, no? The, let, let's make that the banks don't make the mistake. But that's very difficult, right? Uh, every financial crisis, what, what we realize is that the financial sector has found a way of getting around uh, the controls that were devised uh, five years earlier, okay? And I think this was pretty much at the heart, you put it in other, other words, but this is, what we've uh, been seeing, you put more capital requirements, there are two problems. Uh, one is that they may be effective <coughs> and that they might then uh, cut uh, investment in good projects. But the other problem is that uh, the financial sector finds a way of finding funding um, in, 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 in one way or another. Uh, so controlling this middle step is very difficult. So perhaps it's worthwhile to think about what happens, why are these bubbles, why do they take place, and, and what are their effects? And um, here there is this graph. This is from, um, 
This is from an old uh, paper by Wisting, well, 10-year-old paper by Wisting Jorgensen. Uh, here, the, um, the expected one, this is the average expected stock market return from a, from a survey of, uh, of professional forecasters or professional. This was, you know, people whose job was to predict the stock price growth, and you can see um, the, their expectations for stock price growth were highest at the top of the dot-com bubble in year 2000. Okay? So they were most optimistic at a time where all excess return regressions that have been run tell us they should have been more pessimistic. When, when the price is very high, on average, we have a, the return is on average lower. Okay? Not, not only in theory, but in the data. And so this is the average, okay? And if we look at the figure two, which I was hoping, uh, figure two, <laughs> I don't, uh, okay, there we go. Um, this is the dispersion of forecast among the people that were surveyed. And the dispersion of the forecast is highest at the top of the bubble. Okay? This is about stocks, but this is what many other people find in housing, in many assets. Uh, people are most optimistic at the top of the bubble, and at the top of the bubble, there's more disagreement. Now, you th if you translate this, okay, so perhaps uh, you, you can see where I'm going. I'm going uh, to sell some of the work I'm doing, which is, uh, if you want to think about it, uh, taking some stuff for, from Fama, where uh, agents uh, maximize their utility and they are they they do as well as possible for them and their families but where agents don't perfectly understand what goes on in the world okay they try to learn about how the world works but they don't understand really well how prices are formed and then you can have these disagreements and you can have these uh, expectations being at the top of the bubble, and you, so there's no, there's no problem explaining this kind of data. But if you think about what it means having this, uh, gracias. If you think about what it means is, you see, in 2000 there was highest expectation and highest disagreement, but if you think of an equilibrium model where people are trading optimally given these beliefs, the average doesn't matter because not everybody buys a house, right? Uh, every year. Uh, only the most optimistic people will buy the house. So if we would plot the 5% most optimistic people, uh, the, the variance of the belief of those uh, would be huge and much bigger at the top of the bubble. And that's where the problem is, right? There's, for some reason, uh, for reasons that we know, uh, people who have lived in this country for the 2000s, we kind of know. No, we, we saw uh, my, my favorite anecdote is uh, <coughs> the plot of land next to my house went on sale in 2007 for 11 times what I had paid 10 years before. And I went to the state agent and I asked, them, she, said, she said the price was 11 times. And I said, but this is crazy, I'm not going to buy it. And she says, well, but why not? If you like it, you should buy it. I said, why not just ask for a loan? And I said, but I could lose a lot of money. Said, no, why, 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 why would you lose a lot of money? I said, well, because if the price go, goes down, she says, no, the price doesn't go down. Uh, and I said, come, but come on, this is someone I know. No? So I said, come on, you, you know, I know. So it, 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 prices of housing went down in San Francisco, Londres, Paris. And so. She says, no, but in Spain, they never go down. So <laughs> now that plot of land, if you're interested, sells for less than a third of what they were asking. Uh, so these things tend to happen. Real estate agents promote it, uh, some savings bank promote it, and in the end what happens is that uh, this fuels such a huge uh, opportunity for short-term benefits that, that uh, it's very hard to stop the machinery. And uh, these four people that I was talking about, uh, these four agents that were involved in the mistake and are making a mistake. Perhaps something to think about that I don't think has been very much uh, on the table 
is in addition to regulating banks, which has all kinds of problems, like Jordi has said, I agree completely, you know, would we have avoided the, the bubble that we had? Would we have avoided the problems we had with uh, all these liquidity controls, higher capital, regular? I doubt it very much. No, I, I'm, I'm quite sure we would have had it in exactly the same way. But perhaps if uh, some of these uh, investors would have, households would have been better informed, perhaps if the Bank of Spain would have had direct evidence of what these people were thinking would happen with their house. Uh, you know, we, we could do much more. We could require people who take a mortgage, for example, to fill out a, a form saying how much they think the, their house will go up in price. No? And uh, maybe we don't forbid them from Maybe we don't forbid them from, from getting their mortgage, uh, depending on what they say, but maybe we would have a much better idea about whether we have a bubble or not, <clears throat> because the problem is that policymakers never want to prick a bubble, right? We know, we can understand, but they, they always find an excuse not to intervene. And um, having an idea of whether we are in this situation, uh, whether people are simply having unrealistic expectations would be a much, would be very useful thing to have.